like that's already showing live but not the video just the facts okay i'm turned towards you now because <laughs> i can see our stream There's enough of a lag. I'm not sure which way you're supposed to turn. <laughs> the way you turned first was the right way. Oh, we're already live. Sweet. Oh, okay. So the way I turned first this way? Yeah, I think so. No. No. Nope. The other way. <laughs> this is your fault. Well, everything's backwards. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. Should we like, should we like cheers? <laughs> so welcome to WQN TV, folks. <laughs> cheers. How are you this evening, Jill? I'm good. How are you, Clink? <laughs> so what's in your mug? Do we have to admit to this? Oh, we don't have to admit to anything. It's, it's but... Diet Coke. <laughs> Oh, well, I will admit to the fact that mine is full of fruit punch because I'm a child, so I'm going to have to drink it with a straw. <laughs> but I will showcase the mug every time I drink. <laughs> yes. And why do I have to, why do I have, and, and I will let you all know, these are compostable straws. They can go in the, the, the composty stuff. Um, I have to have a straw because, you know, Kool-Aid mustache is not cute. <laughs> That is true. It is not. Yeah. It is not for sure. So, so how, how are you feeling? We we just got back from a trip. I kind of look like it because, you know, I'm, <laughs> you know, had that first shower after sleeping well. Um, yeah. Um, I also did a little rest and um, I managed to get a shower today. <laughs> Uh, I was actually supposed to visit the museum today and um, some some stuff came up and they had to reschedule. So I was kind of a little, re I was relieved. That's a bummer. Yeah, it is a bummer. Um, you know, there's, but I don't have like a super hard deadline on my Dunton stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it is kind of just my, my pace. So it, it's not a big deal. And um, I've moved it forward to May. So, yeah. But, oh, I have an announcement. I guess I can say it here up front. Um, I, it, I, it has not, the schedule has not been officially released, but I have been informed that I will be doing a study center at seminar involving this lady. <laughs> that's all, that's all I'll say because they haven't released the schedule yet, but yeah, I'm very excited. That's exciting. Yeah, and I, I hope people will be interested, you know, seminar attendees will be interested in in uh what I have to to share. So well I was gonna like generally speaking, I Sunbonnet Sue isn't necessarily my favorite thing, but I find it fascinating the different multiple renditions that she shows up as. Uh so it's almost it's almost like the the mythology of Sue that um, yeah, I find and, very uh, interesting yeah Hi, and Arlene. without without giving away too much um that is some of what I'll be exploring and um you know I I like a wacky Sue so <laughs> and there are some wacky ones out there <laughs> There are some wacky Sues and um yeah I'm not gonna I'm certainly will look at like the garden variety Sue but I have lots of lots of wacky Sues to look at so it'll be fun that is very very exciting yeah. I'm very happy for you congratulations no i'm excited it'll be fun i just hope i i don't i don't end up the one in charge or something <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna specifically request you as my my room monitor <laughs> or right, i'll volunteer i'll volunteer you as our favorite word is you will be voluntold you're mm -hmm. gonna be the one holding up the sues <laughs> not fine fine hi robin Wow, YouTube sent you last week's video? Oh, That's weird. bizarre. See, I hope it's not I hope YouTube. we just aren't wearing the same clothes. 
like it looks like if, I didn't check if I was like wearing the same uh, shirt or something. Yeah, I I feel like last week I was wearing something quiltish. This quilty. This week I'm wearing my alma mater. So I'm 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 a nerd tonight. I'm a nerd. Actually, I need to find my my quilt nerding shirt. Yes. I haven't seen that in a minute. I hope someone didn't like accidentally put it in the dryer on too high and has just like <gasps> hidden it away like certain people do. Hmm. <laughs> when it came out the size of your dog's a sweater. <laughs> well, or or the yeah. logos on it melt, you know. Hi, Don. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, my my New England Quilt Museum shirt that I really really liked had been ruined that way. Oh no! Well, I do have to say that the quilt nerding shirts are pretty nice, though. I mean, they're Bella. Was it Bella and Bella Canvas? Bella Canvas. Yeah. Yeah. I never can remember that name. Yeah. Anyway, they're pretty decent. Interesting. So. Every J Janet too says that YouTube sent her last week's video. I guess I guess YouTube really liked that video. <laughs> said make sure you watch this one never that mind the so new one watch this one yeah i mean i copied all of the new stuff so into the streets so. well don't worry everybody we're kind of just bantering <laughs> a little longer than normal here so you're not you didn't miss yeah. anything super important except that stephanie is going to have a study center at american quilt study group seminar in uh tarrytown in september hi rebecca Oh, goodness. I had something that I was going to. Oh, wow. Rebecca said congratulations, Steph. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm excited. Yeah, I wonder if I can. I think I think that it will be problematic for me to try to pull up the chat because I'm. So you're going to have to keep telling me what is. What I'm, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Chat of chat. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, people telling you congratulations. And Maro Dim said, how do you do? So can you do me a favor, Steph? Could you pull up some little reminder announcements, please? Well, I sure can. Um, I think probably the one that people are always excited about, maybe secondarily to the fascinating topics of the stream, is... Um, oh, geez, let me show my screen here. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you see it? Yes, gotta love me some giveaways. Yeah. So, and actually, Steph, yeah. your your graphic there for week one was is much better than mine was. <laughs> yeah, I had a minute. So, you know. <laughs> so everybody, as a reminder for anyone that wasn't here last week, Dawn has super graciously offered us really awesome giveaways for you guys. And we're gonna have one a week. We had last week's, our winner was Tish. I don't know that she's gotten the mug yet because she's traveling. Um, this week is the Mary Witherwax pattern. This is a hefty pattern book. And this actually retails on Dawn's page, her site, her Etsy for um, I think like $28 or so. You're getting quite a nice pattern with this book. That's a reproduction of a quilt by Mary Witherwax. There's some history in here. You will love it. I love it. And I don't even do applique. Okay. That's that's how much I like yeah, it. Yeah, I have my eye on this one. So unfortunately, I'm not eligible to win this week. But <laughs> are I you shall... like, are you just like, are you just like, hey, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. If anyone needs <laughs> to get Stephanie a birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> yes i my husband's going to log in and try to win um no i uh i i will be placing an order for this dawn i think very soon because i i love applique i mean applique is is what i do so um i've had my eye on this for a while and dawn I, I, what jill has been showing us i'm like yeah i need it <laughs> well remember if you are going to get it remember there's stuff that your mom wanted to get too on there so like scoot yourself into her order mm -hmm. This is true. <laughs> Save a little bit of shipping or perhaps maybe my mom's credit card could just take care of all of it. Yeah, that's true. And then week three is a really gorgeous tote. Um, I, I said I would show it. I didn't the first week because it was all wrapped up, but it's time to show it. This tote is a good size. I, could, I use it to carry books in um and it's and it's a nice thick heavyweight canvas 
the bottom is even thicker and wide. The straps are also nice and wide. This thing and can long. Hold. Sometimes straps seem like they're just like a mm -hmm. little too short and the tote bag yeah. like gets you in the armpit. Nope. This strap is long. Can fit my whole arm in here. Um, I use it to carry books to and from the library. And it also has just this like really pretty picture from her so her next book there, the sewing rolls book. So that is very nice for week three. And to enter in tonight and next week's giveaways you have to participate in the chat so i'm keeping track here as people participate in the chat we will do the drawing uh at the end of the stream tonight and that is how you win those fantastic things for week four that's a little bit special and we have some special parameters for how you enter into that giveaway let's take a look at that shall we please do so for entering into week four between now and the time that we stream for week four, you are asked to show the world that you're participating. Please take a selfie, take a curated photo of you with your book, with your pet, on your bed, on a quilt, on your desk. Somewhere creative that says, I am participating in this uh, uh, book reading. Um, if you post it to your social media, please tag the quilt nerding and collector with a needle accounts. If you don't want to post it to your social media, you can just DM a photo right to quilt nerding or collector with a needle and we will share it for you. We do intend to share them on social media and tag things unless you specifically ask us not to. And we are keeping track of that as well. However, I do want to tell you, if you don't get kind of a confirmation that we have seen it somewhere, if you're sharing it to your own, you won't get entered. You've got to make sure that we see it. So, so far, I've only got two entries for that. I have Tish and I have Arlene. So if you have done this and I haven't counted you, please let us know so that I can make sure that you're counted because you get to win Dawn's brand new Rolls book, huh. which will be given away on the last night. When she's here with us after we do our um, just a regular kind of book discussion, we get to talk to her and she will be here on the screen and you get to talk to her. So you don't want to miss that. And then you get her brand new book. Yeah. So and it's a good one. It's and, a good um, one. Yes. I'm a, I'm an absolute derelict and don't have it at my desk. That's well, and we're going to see kind of a, a peek into that kind of book tonight with this roles chapter. Yeah. So you you definitely want to make sure that you are in on that. Uh so I think that does it for announcements, Steph, unless you have something. Uh I don't. I want to jump in because you know, we are our, our pre pre-live chit chat. I had to stop myself multiple times because yes. I wanted to talk about stuff. Yes. And we're like at each other, like, if we talk about it now, we won't be able to talk. Or well, we could talk about it again. But. Well, before we get going, <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that Rebecca says she's doing a study center on 20th century baby quilts. So she's gonna um. leave her shoes at home. Oh. <laughs> That sounds really exciting, <laughs> Rebecca. I look forward to reading the synopsis on that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that'll be great. That sounds really good. Hi, oh. Don Popovich. I think this is the first time we're seeing you. So glad that you're here joining us. All right, Steph. Are you ready to go? Let's okay. take it away. What have we here? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> this was being discussed on one of um I is it Don and I'm apologize I, I don't know the answer to this but is it Don's group about on Facebook Italy yeah and for her and her antique and vintage tools. yes okay Basically. so I I'm I'm part of that group and there was definitely some chit chat about uh the ear spoon <laughs> and I think we may have like touched on it last week um we were you know doing needle and thread but indeed people of recent history and antiquity um used the ear spoon to get a little earwax <laughs> to put on their thread just like we would do with these wax today um it every time i think about it i go <laughs> but is it really that much different than like taking your thread and just going nah, nah, nah. well i <laughs> think in this moment what's a little like off-putting for me is this is like an ear spoon on a bodkin right and that was what i was gonna say not yeah. only is this an ear spoon 
it's mounted to a bodkin. So it's, well, you know, two birds, one stone. You can. But like, I would worry about like <laughs> residue. I, <laughs> you know, I like you're lacing, you're lacing stuff up and it's just like, I didn't, I didn't mean to wax that. <laughs> you know, just saying, just saying. <laughs> so yeah um but the item above is just a, a a pretty gold bodkin and um what are bodkins used for lacing things up which <laughs> i never it's been it's it's one of those tools where it's always been difficult for me to grasp how they were used i i had the same problem with um the the shoe hooks there the button ah, hooks yes mm -hmm. i could not for the life and it's i don't have one here but i couldn't for the life of me figure out what those were how they worked and i bought one once uh some years ago at a store that's really really pretty it's very ornate it's uh engraved with initials and things i was so excited and I got home and I showed Dawn and she like explained and I'm like, what is this? And she explained to me what it was. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's still pretty, but I thought it was far more glamorous than that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I We think of a sh like things like this, bodkins, shoe button hooks as being like so antique, like a million years ago, centuries ago. Um, but I very regularly find pretty old ones, both, both, I mean, like the shoe button hooks and these bodkins. Now I'm not finding like beautiful gold and silver ones, but you know, the more ubiquitous like steel ones and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I always find them in sewing kits. You know, I don't. And maybe it's around here. They've accumulated. I don't know. Well, but maybe I, I'm I, just, am I just not paying enough attention maybe? You know, it's, it's, I'm never looking for them. It's just, you know, when you buy, if you're lucky enough to find, you know, a big sewing basket still full of all the supplies from a very elderly person's estate sale, that seems to be where I find them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just something that has accumulated in their stuff. Like, you know, the, the down the generations button jar kind of thing. It's like, mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I have a few that I think they're they're very pretty and I think they're kind of old, you know, and um Dawn mentions that she um they're easily lost like sewing needles. Ah, yes. Yes. And so, what might one do if one uh might lose a bodkin because it is like a sewing needle? One might get something like this. Make sure you I'm take the to... make, make sure you go back to full screen on yourself. I am. Um to be able to show this because I got to say, I, I have to toot my own horn a little bit. Um, I did make this. Uh, and and you where see, did you get the pattern to make that? Where could I possibly have gotten a pattern to make this? Well, I'll have to share my screen again in a moment. But our dear friend, the author here, also does a lot of writing for Piecework Magazine. So if you're a subscriber, then you have surely seen her articles. And this was one of her projects, was this beautiful little bodkin holder um, that you make out of uh, embroidered, you know, pretty embroidered um, ribbon. Mm -hmm. So it's just that, you know, it's the pieces of ribbon. It's it's a pretty simple project, but it's very satisfying. Um, and then I made one out of newer, you know, that newer sort of 1970s mm -hmm. kind of embroidered, like, <clears throat> you know, on the bodice of a dirndl kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but you get to, you know, include some embroidery stitches, some ribbon, some, you know, pretty pretties. And, it, you know, it's just a few little bits. And it, it was really satisfying. And so now I don't lose my bodkins. <laughs> See, and, that was another piece where I'm like, what is this thing? I always just thought I've it was never a I've never seen an antique one in the wild. So oh, I, I I I bought a whole. I don't want to say like a lot of them, but yeah, it was yeah. like a grouping of like five or six of them. I I'm not going to show all five or six tonight, but um, <laughs> it was there's one in particular in that group that I guess is especially interesting, which is not what I'm going to show tonight. But Don's reply to it was, "You always find the best stuff," <laughs> and I'm thinking, "You have a whole book of awesome stuff that I don't have." <laughs> I know, but she she does find good stuff. Um, <laughs> this is kind. This is sort of, and you know, the camera's not picking it up very well. 
and my pasty skin probably won't either. But this is actually like <laughs> it, it, it blends in, <laughs> <laughs> blends right in. It's like mother of pearl, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming this is still a bodkin, even though the hole is very tiny. So I don't know if this might be like more of like an all or something. I'm not sure, but. It's a beautiful little thing that I don't want to lose. So I was very pleased to put it in here. <laughs> yeah. um, one thing I would also mention, bodkins are actually pretty useful. If you have ever done the jamming the end of this drawstring of your sweatpants onto a safety pin or the elastic and something onto a safety pin and had the safety pin come unhooked as you're trying to get it through a casing, well, friends, a bodkin is the best thing. Um, you know, you can, if it's something that's a little swirly, like elastic, you can literally just take a couple little stitches to hold it on the bodkin. And then it's like super strong and it's nice and firm. And so you still actively use that. By I the actually way, Don said mother of pearl is really hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and you know, again, I found it in a sewing kit. You know, yeah. so you never know when you're going to find a treasure. No, that's um, true. And that's why I often do look through those, especially when people go like, oh, it's just this junky sewing kit over there. And I'm like, who you call a junkie? Oh, no. Sometimes they're treasure. This is a ballpoint one. There's a little, that's, it's got like a little ball at the end of it. That is um, teeny tiny. Yeah, it's very tiny. And then, um. You know, it's got that double eye situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. So these, this one was shown in Don's book, and yeah, and it's. Martin like, it, it says my more. bodkin has threaded many a cased lace. <clears throat> yep. They're so good for just you know. Um, yeah. I feel. And I yes, mean... you 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 asked. Do I? I still I still use a lot of my vintage um sewing stuff. I have more vintage items than I have antique items. Um, but yeah, the stuff that's sturdy and, you know, not compromised anyway, heck yeah, I use it because they're better quality. Mm. Oh, no, absolutely. absolutely. Stuff is such poor quality these days that, you know, like needles, I think I talked about that last week. Like I, I actually use the needles, the antique needles that I find because they're better, you know, polish them up with some emery and they're perfect. Let us look at another bodkin. Robin says Steph seems to have all the luck with the sewing kits she found. <laughs> you know, it's. It has been many years, though. I mean, it's it's not like I, I got all this stuff at once. I, it's many years of picking through nasty stuff to mm -hmm. find some good, gem, you know, some gems. Well, um, and we we were definitely like searching through some gemmy and nasty things this past <laughs> this past week. <laughs> for those yeah. that weren't for those that don't know, because if you don't uh, follow Steph on her Twitch stream that we did a pop up on. We have spent the last long weekend, we were in Pennsylvania <clears throat> doing various things, but um, antiquing was one of them, and we yep. had a good time. We did, and um, I mean, I've done that kind of stuff before, but yeah, it was um, it was definitely experience, like, you know, <clears throat> doing that that hardcore trek that you do for, for your, I mean, your, your business. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it was business to you. For me, it was just living well, I mean, it's, it's both it's business and it's pleasure and it's suffering yeah. and it's <laughs> suffering for the needle needlework tools and quilts <laughs> yeah yeah but you know it's it's a cross I'm willing to bear so let us look at another box and I forgot I wasn't showing my screen um I love stuff like this so this is a souvenir bodkin and this is, I mean, like I was trying to think like what kind of souvenirs would we get like this now? And all I could think of was like Mardi Gras beads. <laughs> but, you know, this is this, these are the kind of things that like back in the day, you know, like, I don't know what in the eighties you might get like a comb or something. I don't know what you would get today as, as, a, as like a little mm -hmm. souvenir, but um, it's a useful thing, you know, and it's got this, the, you know, the Panama exposition on it. And that was 1915. So um, um, this is so cute. Rebecca, I am an antique and vintage quilt and needlework dealer. Um, <clears throat> I'll put my handle in the chat for you. I forgot that you are new to our chat. Uh, and that is my main, that is my main business other than whew, doing this here with Steph. And I work at the New England Quilt Museum. Sorry, Steph, go ahead. Yeah, so... This one was just, I think, just a fun, cute thing. 
Um, I uh, So it's funny that you akin this to Mardi Gras beads because the only difference here is Mardi Gras beads are not good for anything. I know. After I Mardi know. Gras. <laughs> that was a terrible example, but I just, like a pen, you know, like I just think of any kind, I guess any kind of like merch or swag you get these days, like a pen, um, a mouse pad. This is the mouse pad of the 1915s. <laughs> it's useful it's got some some tr some branding on it it'll remind you of this thing you did mm -hmm. um do you still use any tools like this because you do some historical costuming don't you I do and you know that's kind of why I you said you really didn't know about bodkins or like really what they were used for but I did mm -hmm. because like way back um I guess 17th century and before um, you got the situation where people did not have, well, they didn't have snaps and zippers. They did have buttons, but those could be, you know, expensive or not practical. And so they literally laced their clothes together and they used the bodkins to be able to quickly get those lacings through. And sometimes it was just, you know, I mean, they'd lace their sleeves on maybe, you know, leather sleeves, possibly to a quilted vest or something, a jerkin or gherkin. Um, and they would lace it together through these using little um, aglets, like our uh, points. And they were essentially like little pieces of cording that had um, ends on it. And, you know, if you could not afford the fancy ends that were like gold or silver or whatever, you'd use a bodkin. You'd yeah. also lace your um your corset or your bodice with a bodkin. So yeah, they were they were a personal tool that you would kind of have on your person quite frequently or in your I don't know, the area where you get dressed. <laughs> um and I I think um, you know, I mean remembering correctly, I mean women pretty much always had some type of bodkin like thing mm -hmm. um, because they they did wear you know laced corsets and laced um, bodices but men also use them so Maradim yeah. said think... Romans used a bodkin to sew up women's hairstyles ah yes I have heard that too yeah so you know when I'm thinking about this thing's real handy for getting the elastic back in my sweatpants <laughs> <laughs> The storied history of the bodkin. I'm one of those people that like just kind of gives up and just takes it out. <laughs> Suspenders on sweatpants is not cute. <laughs> so uh, this is the issue of if you um do have a subscription to Piecework or you want to get a um a back issue, this is the issue where um the the little bodkin um, holders. Um, article and project is it has all the instructions so it's and Dawn is a wonderful teacher from that aspect too of writing up instructions um and it is the summer 2022 issue so I just I wanted also to put think that she in sells patterns I, Dawn correct me if I'm wrong but I'm yeah, pretty sure you she, have a, you, a, a bodkin holder kits. pattern on your Etsy and there are kits too right oh the kits. yeah well then yeah so Dawn's got you covered and if, yeah. you, if you want the magazine there it is <laughs> So before, as we transition into another topic, um, and I think we're kind of skipping over scissors, but we'll come back um, mm -hmm. because I have, I guess there's, there's a little bit of a challenge with scissors and extra pictures <laughs> um, simply because Americans didn't manufacture a lot of scissors back in the day. So, but we'll come back because I have something that you said you've never seen and I want to know if Dawn has ever seen it. Well, so moving on to this big chapter um this huge chapter spawned a book yeah so this is again the book that you can win in our giveaway in the very last week when we talked to don uh if you are sending in um, a selfie or a photo or something of you with your antique um american tools book that says you're participating and it's funny because when looking at some pictures to show for this week's talk, you know, Dawn's asking me, what kind of stuff do you do you want to show or could I take a different picture of or something else I might have in my collection? And I, you know, kind of was asking her about things in the roles category and whatnot. And um, she basically said that the whole reason that she wrote a book about uh, specifically about sewing rolls is she had so many that she wanted to catalog that weren't American. And I, you know what I said to her? 
that's a really good reason to write a book about sewing rolls. And that book is nothing but. So if you like this chapter, which is a very informative chapter, it's amazing that to think that like there could be a ton more to look at, but there is. Yeah. And it is endless. Yes. And so then you're going to really want that book. Right. And Don, I, I don't know if I'm I'm showing this kind of out of order, but um, this appears to me to be a bin of your many, many, many sewing rolls. And I mean, this, I guess this is the point. There's so many different kinds. They're so unique. They're so beautiful um, and so interesting that this this obviously beautiful collection spawned the book from this big this is so. her uh bin of reticules oh i'm mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> <laughs> well nonetheless reticules go in there too but my point being you have many beautiful little things so all right let's go back to oh i wanted to show this one too and yeah, I, she, i'm not she, sure she said she pointed out like those were sewing those were reticules at jules request because i said um uh -huh. I told her that I find reticules very interesting. I don't have any in my collection. Um, so they are on the to get list that's ever growing after we look at things in here. <laughs> Before we show all the, the lovely pictures, this is another plug <laughs> for one of Dawn's piecework projects. Um, this is one that's on my list to make because this is so cool. And I'm so fascinated with any of them. And we'll see more. Anything where you can like, it has a receptacle for an, a, a thimble. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I'm so fascinated with that. And I don't know why. It just, I, you know, thimbles are so easily lost. And I, I just, I'm so fascinated by that. <laughs> well, I but guess at the end of the little... day, all this stuff is so easily lost. So we it need, yeah. we need all these like pretty receptacles to hold all these easily lost things. Oh, and Don said, hint, hint, there might, there just might be another project in Piecework this year. Oh. So make sure that you, know, you renew those subscriptions. I'm no psychic, but I had this gut feeling that <laughs> there might be something, something else coming. And um, yeah, I can't wait. Because I just, you know, those, those little needlework tools lend themselves to making more needlework tools, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. 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 So more one this. of a kind yes and well and, and I think that was kind of my point about and I feel like a dummy for for thinking that those were not just reticules but anyway <laughs> um, <laughs> they are all so unique like these are not mass I mean there I think there probably were some mass produced ones like you know mm -hmm. but for the most part I feel like everything that I've I've seen and I like I said I have well I don't know if I told you this before or after this just started, but I have one and my mom currently has it. She was going to, she was studying it and going to pattern it. Mm -hmm. um, but they are, they're all so unique. And even when you find two that are alike, there's still some kind of difference. Um, and I think sometimes it boils down to like how the person used it, you know, like here's the, the bodkin, you know, it's got those same little stitches and the, and then yeah, Don just said, do you see it in the purple? And I I almost didn't see it because it kind of blends in with mm -hmm. whatever the un the underside there of the fabric is that's kind of matching the gold. Mm -hmm. But this, I guess, is this leather or is it? Um, it seems that looks like leather, looks like leather to it's, me. Yeah. Maradim said, I, "I love the idea of doing needlework to hold my needlework tools." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just all, all that I've seen of these. That's what they seem like to me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I mean, I'm sure just, just like you can like in, you know, more modern times find little sewing kits, also swag, um, you know, they're mass produced, but uh, you know, I, I just feel like there's this, this time period where all of these were just these little handmade things. So cute. I mean, just so simple, right? Is this just this is just a really small, simple one, right? Mm -hmm. This one, at first, to me, seemed potholder in style. <laughs> but there's this loop here that tells us it's meant to be rolled up. And I guess on the other side, it has a button. Mm -hmm. And I like, I, I really I like the just very simplistic um, uh, piecing going on in here with these mm -hmm. really cute fabrics. Like, what a way to use your scraps. 
Mm -hmm. Or just like, I know. I'm thinking for someone like me that doesn't do a lot of hand sewing, like some something like this would be a really great way to practice hand sewing. Yeah, you know, that's the, I mean, they really can be very tiny or they could be beefier <laughs> to hold more stuff. Yeah, there's and... a couple, there's a couple in here that are really large and I'm like, I really want to come across something that big. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually I learned, uh, I attended a lecture that Don did and from there, I learned that these weren't just like hold your needles and your whatever, um, you know, maybe a spool of thread or a little pair of scissors or whatever, but they're also were the ones with channels in them. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the next one. I yeah. have, I have one of those. I just, I just don't know where it is at the moment. I'm going to quickly skip the next picture. Um, mm -hmm. So ridicule too. Oh, poops. I think I'm going to have to like do a really, really fast skip. Don't look, you guys don't look. <laughs> Yes, Janet asked, <laughs> could they also be a status symbol within a sewing group? I, you know, I mean, I guess particularly like some things could be seen as status for wealth in terms of like what kind of fabrics you got. But mm -hmm. Don would definitely be the one to answer that question better than me. Well, and I'm thinking of some of Don's patterns that are, rep, um, you know, replicas, reproductions of actual, you know, sewing rolls and mm -hmm. other little things that she's, um, that she owns. I know there's some flame stitch stuff that, you know, it's needlepoint and that would, that, that is much different than, you know, just digging in your scrap bin, you know, for some small lengths of fabric to make a little roll, you know, something more, um, you know, it's still kind of custom, but. I feel like that's that's kind of the fancy ladies sitting in the afternoon and doing their stitching and they make themselves a beautiful little thing. Whereas some of these are just truly utilitarian. Like I need yeah, a sewing Don, kit to keep up my pocket, right? Yeah, like well, like military ones for sure. Don yeah, said some yeah. some are very showy and others have mm -hmm. uh, commemorative embroidery. Yeah, yeah, and I you know I mean again that's the beauty of being able to make your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but this, this is, this is what really, and I feel like if I ever saw one of these out in the wild, um, you know, found one and not really knowing much about it, I would think, okay, it's a sewing roll, but it never would have occurred to me that these little channels were mm -hmm. for pulling thread through. So like mm -hmm. your hank of thread, pull it through there to keep it from getting tangled. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, brilliant. <laughs> and I learned this, I learned this from her lecture. And I guess apparently there were even some that were fancy that would like maybe say like the weight of the thread or something like stitched or printed on there. Um, I have one that um, she's got one that's very similar to mine in here um, that I actually bought at Brimfields digging around um I have one that holds, well, at least it came with holding floss on page 122, um, kind of rolled up in the top, in the top here, um, that, that white one there. I have, I have something very similar to that. I just don't know where it is right now. So we will have to wait for another day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have, just have some... roll. I just have sewing stuff everywhere. Well, I happen to have some of the military ones and um, I think I have one Red Cross thing, but it's only a part of it. Like I have some of the full mm -hmm. military sewing rolls um, and they're definitely not fancy. <laughs> they're like very, very utilitarian. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So let's see. Because um, I'm a dummy and got these in the wrong order. I'm just going to. So this one is like kind of a combination, right? It's got the bag and this sort of, I mean, is this- Yeah, they like, get really interesting when they start to yeah. add this kind of like drawstring bag to it. Mm -hmm. And so I loved the piece about they were these, sometimes these fancy things and now I'm kind of dipping over into the reticule that these little fancy bags or little project bags or whatever were kind of like, you know, slung over the furniture. <laughs> Like on mm -hmm. the doorknobs or on the arm of the chair, like, look at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a lady who has time enough to make fancy things. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so funny when you compare, like, today, like, if we were to, like, sling our purse over the chair. <laughs> it's definitely not to add really any glamour to the room, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, but there are the people that go, you know, out to the restaurant and they put their coach back down for everyone to see. 
I think these are prettier than that. <laughs> I do too. I would, okay, if I had like all the money, I would buy all, all of these and no coach bags. I could, I could care less about coach bag. <laughs> okay. So, ah, all right. So uh, the reticules. We actually just saw one of these when we were out shopping over the last weekend. Do you remember seeing that? <laughs> there was a point where I was in a fever dream and I was seeing things that I thought I had seen over and over. So <laughs> I did not, I, obviously, I, like, I did not get it. I am actually, like, in this moment having a bit of a crisis. Like, why didn't I get it? Um, cause I don't have a single one in my collection. I, unless I'm not paying attention and I think there's something else, I'm not seeing them like at all when I'm out shopping. Mm -hmm. So, um, either I need to pay better attention. I'm also wondering, do I think that they're just an actual, just like reticule, like purse, like it's just one receptacle and it doesn't have mm -hmm. anything particularly tied to needlework. But I need well, some I, in my life. Yeah, I feel like we saw a lot of, you know, beaded little, they were more like little handbaggy kind of things. They were clearly not for this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they didn't have any sewing aspect to them. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> I just think these things are so charming. You know, everybody loves a project bag <laughs> or a little bag to carry your, your stuff in. I mean, yeah, it's really no different now than us carrying project bags except for the fact that our project bags now are significantly larger yeah <clears throat> that one's really pretty i like the mm -hmm. all the fabric oh yeah one. that stripey like and then it's the way oh it's gathered and it just yeah stunning so i guess we're kind of at a we're, we're at a crossroads again here is um predating the reticules because the reticules are eight 1800s right we've got the pocket mm -hmm. that spans quite a time period um and i i gotta be honest with you i do like a pocket <laughs> and because women as a rule struggle to have useful pockets in our pants still you mean you mean like we do now <laughs> yes i mean yes i really i'm all for bringing back the pocket you know but from and you know this was something i knew a lot more about pockets than in a little about reticules than I did necessarily about sewing rolls because this is kind of falls into that historical costuming territory. But, you know, these were worn kind of in between the skirts and the petticoats and you'd mm -hmm. have slits on the sides of your skirt and the pocket was worn tied around your waist. And it also has a slit kind of, and then that baggy part at the bottom would fill out, you know, all the stuff. Um, you know, it's basically like a purse under your skirts. And uh, I like it. I I would, you know, if people would look at me oddly or any more oddly than they do, <laughs> I would certainly wear an antique pocket with my sweatpants because not all my sweatpants have pockets. <laughs> and at um, this point, based on if we were wearing them on the outside, it would look like we were carrying saddlebags. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but and also here you see the um, the tape loom which um, I was just fascinated with these for a while. But th from what I understand, these were kind of a thing that every household in like colonial America kind of had one of these. And, you know, whoever had a little time on their hands was expected to do a little tape weaving because they didn't have, you know, zip ties. They didn't have the little uh, twisty things that you put on the top of bread. <laughs> they, you mm -hmm. know, and... Think of all the things that, you know, chip clips, they didn't have them. <laughs> all the things that you might need just a little bit of string for mm -hmm. and it needed to be sturdy, you know. So I, I love the inclusion of the tape loom in this picture. So it's funny, oh. pockets, they're another thing where I don't have any in my collection. I used to see them a lot more than I do now. Um, Once... Dawn had kind of mentioned me like, hey, keep your eye out for blah. I hardly see them at all anymore unless I go to someplace likely to have a concentrated amount nearby, like a pens show mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but they are definitely on my list of I, well, I'd I like mean, to have at least one. I mean, do you think it's it's sort of because they wore out 
because they were kind of part of the clothing or do you or do you think that they're sort of they were a thing that was always with clothes and it just never made it into the I don't know into the dealer market of being they're saved. definitely like they're definitely in the market um yeah I just I, I know I've never seen one well I feel like it's one of those things right where you either have it where once you notice it you'll notice it everywhere or I used to notice them and then once somebody told me to look for them then they were all gone <laughs> so <laughs> um I've I mean I've seen quite a few of them when we go to pens um the first time I ever went one of the dealers there had had a set of them that were that sold in minutes I I I saw them because I was in her booth um and she was having a um a, a tickle throat moment and and having kind of a coughing spell so i offered her a a lozenge and and we just very briefly i noticed them and was just chatting with her and no sooner did that happen and like 10 people converged on us um, and uh i backed away and the next time i came back to her booth it was gone they were gone <laughs> yeah well and maybe so, that's it they are they i mean they just they are so sought after and mm -hmm. yeah i All mean right, so clearly there's less in here that say collection of the author <laughs> than some of the other chapters so yeah they're hard they're, they're definitely harder to collect yeah. good point okay so this would be one of the little hoop bags with, that were made out of embroidery hoop to mm -hmm. hold them open at the top and you know my mom um I don't know if she made like she took a class where she made one but I do remember her having a couple of these like but they were clearly modern ones they were not um they were not antique ones um and I mean I get it, it was just a thing that I was like oh look at that you know <laughs> take it for granted um and I mm -hmm. never gave much thought to it mm -hmm. um but ha you know having seen these in the book and then you know now really looking at these pictures I'm like what a useful thing. And, you know, utilizing a hoop, you know, the hoop to keep it open, you know, instead of a little bag that collapses on itself is kind of brilliant. I, well, that and I, I don't think I noticed any in the pic, the ones we're showing here, but I especially love the example on 146 at the bottom of the page here because it has an actual like handle to, you know, uh, carry it which mm -hmm. I can see like kind of a tiny little strap on the top here, but like this one's really showing the strap mm -hmm. on it. Um, yeah, and I um, think I've seen something similar to this particular one out in the wild. Uh, well, but that's little, it. I don't, little... also don't see these super often. Yeah. yeah. Well, this little green one looks like it has like either a, a yeah, handle, I saw or maybe that, like yeah. a set of handles. And the other but ones yeah, look like they have kind of little like finger handle. Dawn just says mm -hmm. she does have a hoop bag pattern, a digital pattern in her Etsy shop. And oh, that they're cool. super fun, super fun to make. Oh man, I missed that. I thought I had seen all of the cool goodies. Well, on <laughs> you need to add it to your list to shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, but you know what? The other thing that these are useful for if you just have enough places to put all your needlework things is they make nice jewelry containers too, because hmm. come on picture open because sometimes they would have little pockets on the inside of them, which were meant for thread and stuff. Dawn said under the lid, there's little bands to hold scissors. But gosh, look at all the, this, like, just frothy, lovely hand sewing. I just love it. So one reason I think, like, I, I definitely need something like this is I want to get into doing more handwork. I have bought many of the things to get into doing more handwork. I I just don't feel organized enough <laughs> to, like, well, bring, to, like, to, like, drag around the handwork. <laughs> So perhaps you need one of these little hoop bags or a reticule or a sewing roll, housewife, you, and then yes. you'll have all of the things you'll hand sew it. And then you'll have all of the things at your fingertips for more hand sewing. Yes. And then after you get Dawn's pattern, maybe you can have one made for me by my next <laughs> birthday. 
Hmm. I see how this goes. All right. <clears throat> now here is another one. So this and one, the way it's kind of sitting almost looks like a bonnet to me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm wonder. I kind of wondered about the construction of this, like the way it, it's kind of gathered around this thing here. And is that part of like, is that the needle book, you know, going back to that really pretty red one, mm -hmm. open that one again, this it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, Don, but to me, it looks like this needle book was maybe made out of like silk covered pasteboard or, or you know, fabric covered pasteboard. And then the bag itself has been like stitched onto that. It's gathered and stitched around. Is that, am I understanding that right? Perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> I will let event. you know. I will let you know when I know. <laughs> In any event, I think these are just lovely. You know, again, mm -hmm. it's like, it seems like, and again, it's a useful thing to have, but it also doesn't take a huge amount of fabric. Yeah. And I mean, it's quite likely that, again, some of these fancy ladies might have had some scraps for making a dress and then they could make a matching reticule or, or a little bag to, you know, hold their, their sewing stuff. I mean, that's just a, a conjecture on my part, but seems like it, right? That's how I would live my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and look <laughs> at this. Look at that fancy pin cushion. It looks like it's it's in the interior of one of these. So yeah, these are interior pockets, I guess. And then this is the pin cushion. Uh, Dawn said it's often super wide ribbon for the body. So you have ah, selvage. And she said, okay. yes, the okay. needle books are often covered cardstock. Gotcha. Okay. Ah, so ribbon. Yeah, that makes sense. Then you wouldn't have to deal with any fraying edges. Hi, Jennifer. People wear smarty pants, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so back to the big bin. And that, you know, now that I'm looking at this, like, yeah, I swear I was like, oh, those must be sewing rolls. No, nah, no, they're all ridicules. <laughs> um, so let's jump back to this item. Janet said, and as a Girl Scout leader, we made camping pockets out of bandanas designed like the small Kleenex holders that are made. It's looped through your front belt loop on your jeans to put stuff on either side. I was ah, not in Girl so Scouts, cool. but that sounds very interesting. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, so I'm kind of picturing, I think I know what you mean. Um but yeah, that, oh, that's so neat. I love a good Girl Scout project. My uh, mom was a Girl Scout leader. <laughs> Jennifer had asked at what age a child would start having their own bag. Dawn said for pockets and bags, if the family had money, could be three to four when they started sewing because they see examples in paintings. Yeah. That is very and, interesting. Yeah. And samplers. <laughs> I mean, if if they are to be believed, <laughs> those samplers with the ages on them, those kids were yep. stitching early. Never felt like such an underachiever in my life. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so this, <laughs> this item, <laughs> the sewing companion, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have one. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll close up in a minute, but what it appears to consist of um, is this item that could definitely uh kill a man <laughs> hey and we need another those. item <laughs> another item that could surely kill a man so <laughs> um yeah and i i i've often been curious so let me let me stop sharing my screen so we can um actually look at these so it's in this little very very small um so, Sweeney Todd, <laughs> here's the racer blade. <laughs> wow, that looks so much bigger than the than the package you just showed. Yeah, I mean it's well, I mean yeah, it fits in here. Let me, I'll put it back in so you can see. Yeah, I was mean, gonna say, fits... can you just show it all open? Oh, okay. They look they looked bigger in the in the photo you said. Does it have all its components, or is it missing something in the middle? As far as so in the pictures Don has the um. Well, mine, the, and I don't know if it, if it, if it really makes any difference. She's, so hers are like, if there's a white one, the cream colored or, or yellowish one, and then the black one. And my black one has different colored velvet inside. So I don't know if that denotes anything, but hers appears, um, the, her black one appears to have 
something in here in mm-hmm. this little slot. Yeah. But I don't know it. I can't tell if they're needles or what they are. Um, they almost look like toothpicks or something. I'm not sure. She said she said um, the straight edge razor slides in and out. The middle is where the straight edge the extra razors. razors. Are that's what they are. They're the, it's the paper covering. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. So you're yeah. just missing some fresh razors. Exactly. Yeah. So I've got a. So we can only man. kill one man. <laughs> we can only kill one man before this gets too dull. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll have to saw at the next one. Um, but you know, even though this appears to be a bit <laughs> dull and old, it. <laughs> um. That's still quite dangerous, you know. That is, <laughs> that is hefty. I mean, half of me is like, does anyone, you know, like the um, the little the little straight razors now that people do for like dermaplaning or um, for anyone that doesn't know what dermaplaning is, it's kind of like like shaving off the peach fuzz on your skin, or they do they use it for like shaping yeah. their eyebrows. Half Those of me is like, does some, did someone wonder? It's like there's someone that finds one of those and goes, oh. I have the best use for that. And you see them like using this like antique, like straight razor to like do their eyebrows. But or... you know, those modern ones, the the ones that they have like little wires. Yeah. That but are you over. can so buy you them that's just like... a straight razor. They're just a lot can more you? expensive. Yeah. Well, in any event, I mean, this is, I mean, seriously, this could do some damage to a person. And Janet then... said, Janet said, what the heck is that used for marking your sourdough? <laughs> well see that's and that's my question so this is the other implement so if you if you don't cut their throat you can gouge their eyes <laughs> um but what i and this so this is like i don't know if this is easy to see here but it's like a exacto knife kind of. no it's no? like a it's like a very pointy piece of metal that has been folded so this is like the spine of it and it's hollow inside like so, so it imagine kind of looks like an like, antique pen tip, kind of, and then the tip. Oh, back to the camera. It's like rounded. It's bent, yeah. So if you can imagine, like a very, very narrow triangle, then that's been folded, and then the tip bent over a little bit. That's what. It's so it's like. almost like it's and, almost like the tip of a pen, and then on the edge of it is one of those like teeth scrapers <laughs> that we all hate so much. So my best guess before Dawn tells me I'm wrong <laughs> is that this little picky thing would be for picking up some picking at some stitches and this nasty guy as for slicing some stitches so this is predating a seam ripper so Dawn says sewing companion for ripping seams because clothing was frequently remade and altered yeah and they did make tiny stitches so this little pick could be helpful you know it's funny because that straight razor one there there are people now that will buy those little straight razors that you use for your eyebrows Mm -hmm. and they will use those just like this to rip seams open or they'll use the the battery operated ones the little tiny tiny buzzers oh you know oh oh oh, oh, yes yes yes. yeah those little little, tiny ones the little well sometimes i guess the mustache groomers or the i've seen them people even use smaller even smaller than oh. that they're they're made for women or at least marketed to women they're i don't know it's called like touch and glide or i don't know something weird like that it's like it's tiny battery I operated think I, I think i know what you're talking about yeah yeah and made for like you know if you were just gonna like touch up like i don't know like your sideburns or something <laughs> weird like you know or yeah, i, I think it. i think in the commercial it's like you know a little a little bikini touch up or or if you have like like a couple little hairs <laughs> here or something like that just keep it keeping tom Selleck in uh check <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah okay so this this is this is definitely used how i expected that it was <laughs> Um, so I think go there's some, there's something you got in your collection there that I certainly don't have. I know. I, I actually don't sure even that... know that I've ever seen one or at least I noticed make sure... one. Yeah. I want to make sure that I have seen all of the pictures. I, I actually I have sure a plan sure. to, in the next week or two, to go, um, visit a particular shop that does have a couple of sewing tool dealers in that I can often find some really interesting things that not necessarily things you see all the time because they're going to have a sale. So who knows? There could be some interesting photos um, 
Awesome. You know, at some at some time coming. And I feel like that's the kind of dealer that I'm going to find something like that in. So we didn't have a whole lot of scissors pictures because a, a lot of the scissors uh, during the the, an the antique time period were actually made in other countries and imported. So there was one particular scissor thing I had asked Don if we could see. That I'm like, hey, this thing you have isn't in the book. And she's like, it's German. And I'm like, well, of course it is. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. Like the Germans, they were, you know, like cutlery. blade. Because I mean, scissors are essentially two knives on an yeah. axis, you know? Yeah. So yes, the cutlery, like all that stuff was going on in Europe. And, and you know, it was imported here. But I did find that a company called Florian Manufacturing out of um, Plantsville, Connecticut, made a product. And I came upon this completely, like, again, bought a big box of, like, scissors and sewing implements, and these were in there. And it's called The Boker Pinker. <laughs> and, it, and it cuts pretty well, but it pinks. It's got a little wheel, a pinking wheel, and then this little... Um, surface whatever this little solid surface and it's rolling your fabric through it to paint that's it. very interesting is there a date on the box at all um there oh, maybe a is patent. not I don't, you know and i i will say it has been on my list to research this thing um and i just have never gotten around to it i don't see i don't see anything specific on here it does say that boker was established in 1837. Hmm. But Florian, I think, is the company that made these. So I, I don't quite... I don't know. I'm assuming Boker is the company that would have, like, patented it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's got... It's got a patent applied for on it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's manufactured by Florian, but I'm guessing that if you could probably look up the Boker Pinker to see if it received a patent. That it looks like a whale. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I think I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna get some little stick on googly eyes for it. Yeah, I get an eye for it. <laughs> that thing's cool. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit more unwieldy than like regular pinking shears, but you know, mm -hmm. regular pinking shears sometimes you have to be really like because you want your pink edge to be like you know straight and don's guessing giving the given the box and it's mid 20th century yeah oh yeah it's definitely mid-century i would say it's 50s probably robin says a quick 60s. search shows possibly 1950s mm -hmm. that was my guess mm -hmm. um you know i mean it's very this interesting is... i i don't have much in in the way of scissors um which is a shame because but I have a feeling the scissors that I would be looking for are not American. Um, and yeah. the one thing I asked Don to show is a scissors shoe, um, which is like high on my list of things that I want. And it's like a it's it's like a shoe, like you know we see pin cushions in the and the heel like comes up and it has like a set of like three scissors in it. But alas, of course, it's not American. Yeah. I and likewise I did not grab my I have the giant like tailor shears mm -hmm. that they sit over in a I have one of those like um tool caddies you know it's not just sewing tools but like all kinds of things and I keep them in there because they don't fit anywhere else they're so gigantic um they are impossible to cut with I can't imagine people using the I mean you have to have like strong hands to use those because they yeah. really are they're unwieldy but alas they are i think they're either i think they're either ginger or wiss which i think are both german i think hi you um i i my mom collected 75 pairs of scissors and yeah those big shears i can't think of too many applications that I would end up using them in, but the a couple of times that I have used them, they my hand will be cramped by the end. I know it's something obviously you'd build up a muscle too, but I can't imagine trying to build a muscle up to it. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, and well, I mean, you know, and, and I think they were probably used a lot in tailoring. Yeah. Where yeah. you do have like lots of big, long cuts, mm -hmm. you know, big, long, straight cuts. You're not doing any really detail work. So you're just, <laughs> and tailors were typically men. Now I could see the mantua maker who was typically a woman you would still have long cuts to make on parts of gowns, but I don't mm -hmm. know if they use the same kind of scissors or not. I don't, that's, that's something I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any more photos to go through or can I show some things? I would love for you to show some things. We, I, we've looked at all of the lovely pictures that Dawn okay. sent us. So I think we ended up kind of jumping around a little bit, but nothing wrong with that. Going back to our first chapter here with the awls and the stilettos, it's it's interesting that we ended up on these topics tonight because I actually happen to have a few things here um, that you can currently go look at more pictures of, better pictures of, on my uh, business page, which is JA Antiques and Vintage on Instagram. Robin, can you pop that into the chat for me, please? And one of the things that I have that has that had sparked some discussion um, was I, I have this little guy. And um, the discussion was, you know, is is this an all? Is this a stiletto uh, based on the tip? Like, who knows? What's interesting here is <clears throat> the end does screw off. But the inside is hollow, or it's not hollow. I'm sorry, it's it's uh, solid. Um, the top also screws off. I just, I'm not going to screw it off just because it does have a crack in it. So I don't want to. Um, and do you and you and I, I, I was with you when you acquired this. I think, um, or no, you acquired it pretty soon after. Um, uh, this, you I got, you... this I got in Brimfield. You were with me when I, yeah, I, was gonna I say... acquired the umbrella that's the same color of this that's the needle. Right, that's, yeah. right. that's what I'm thinking of. But with this mm -hmm. one, I'm wondering, do you think it was part of the manufacturing process that the reason that they made it like a screw on? Or do you think that they could have had interchangeable tips? Like, you know, I I always think of these questions and I'm like, um, what makes I think more at sense? the time when Dawn and I were talking about this, she had mentioned that sometimes things were just made to screw instead of, you know, things like glue and whatnot. But I mean, that that, to, that, to that point, I don't know, maybe there could have been um, different tips to it. Um, It's, it's very or, ornate. It's a little on the heavier side. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have, it does have a little crack in the top there. But I, I don't know if it might have been. I think it was on, um, Dawn's Facebook page. That I think that we talked about this as a group, um, and there was a vote. There was a big debate on is this an all, or is this a stiletto? Um, where to me, for me personally, I think one of the things I had said, and I'll try to get this close up, is the tip in my opinion, wasn't necessarily very uh, sharp in order to be an all necessarily to like poke through. Mm -hmm. um, but then example here, looking in Dawn's book, uh, she has stilettos here as being metal. So this is clearly not metal. So then does that put that more firmly into the all category? Um, so Dawn said that she thinks it's hand turned and a really nice example. She thinks it's European, possibly a small fid. Terminology can be hard in language translation. You know, who knows? Who knows? But it is interesting. It has some very, again, I will try to get, if you want to see close-up photos and things like that, like, again, they're on my Instagram, but I'll try to get you, like, the detail here um, on the side. It does, it is missing, like, a piece of detail, but it's just... Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the same um, page here, um, 100 in the book, and I actually have one of the, I had it in my bodkin, bodkin holder. I have one of them, mm -hmm. little bone, and it is, it is, it is pretty sharp. You know, I have modern um, awls for, you know, doing um, hand 
you know, hand sewn um, buttonholes and stuff like that. Um, or not hand sewn buttonholes, but like eyelets. That's mm -hmm. what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and things like that. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I have a hard time wrapping my head around stiletto versus all. I mean, an all is for poking holes through. A stiletto is is for, you know, getting into tiny spaces. So well, and when I think about a modern stiletto that I have, it's it's very close to the design of of this piece. Um and and then half of me is thinking, well, if I had an all and I was using it to poke things and all of a sudden I needed to guide things, I'd probably just use the all to guide yeah, things instead of buying Same. anything. So that's why yeah. it's like, hmm, on which day of the week <laughs> am I gonna call this an all? And on which day is a stiletto? It mm -hmm. was a very, it was a very interesting conversation. Don, you tell me, I'm pretty sure that happened on your on your Facebook page. If anyone is on her Facebook page and like they search it out, it was very enlightening. Um, just as a just as a little side note here, Rebecca says, you guys are a hoot and I'd love to travel with you guys. It would be a blast. Rebecca, we are on the East Coast and um, I am always happy to have shopping buddies. So, you know... Brimfield is in the beginning of May, so you just let me know if you're in town. <laughs> I would gladly shop. Um, are we ready for the next goodie? We are. Yeah. Um, going back to the Bodkins and Don, I did not bring up all of them. There, the rest will be for another time. But I did buy this this collection of Bodkin holders because again, I didn't have any. And um, I finally was like, I need some. Uh, oh, Rebecca's in California. You know, Stephanie will be in California at the end of the month. Yeah, I don't know I'll where you are, but she'll be in Temecula. Yep. Uh, so I've got, I've got this, this honker. This is a honker. It is, and is now is that one of the skirt braid ones, or is it just wool? It feels, it feels wooly. Because I know that I had never heard of skirt braid before until I saw Don's project. <laughs> and I know Don has the the skirt braid kits to make those on mm -hmm. or or she did um on her Etsy. Um and I guess because it came in so many different colors, you kind of that that's why those are kind of pretty, you know. They so Don said wool skirt braid. Oh, okay. So, so you probably that's probably what that is then. There you go. <laughs> There you and go. I guess because it's, I mean, it's kind of, it's sort of dense and thick yes. and it yes. makes sense. You know, it is, it's like a thick ribbon. Yeah. I mean, I guess when I'm, when I'm looking at some of this fabric, yeah, I guess you can see it's, is that coming through? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that looks like straight. Okay. I, I'm trying to think what I, I had, I have some and I, yeah, I guess that that is that is what it looks like. <laughs> Mine's a different color. Mine's like gray or brown or something. Rebecca says I'll be there to say howdy. Rebecca, will you actually be on that retreat with in Temecula with Leah Zebra? <laughs> or are you just saying you'll drive by? <laughs> Cuz if that's the case, that would be really cute. I also have this one is very pretty. Oh yeah. This one's oh, much this like... one's this one's much smaller. Let's say. So now much is smaller. that one is that like got like a base layer and then the red is mm -hmm. ribbons that have been connected with the fancy stitching. So it's like a base of white. Like it's a white it's like a thing. tan, you know, silk. And then the red is stitched to hold together and then tied tied on the ends. Okay, I see. Yeah. And you so, know, I just... Stephanie, Rebecca says she will be in Temecula with you. <laughs> and I think I our I don't remember if Arlene told me she would too. So yep. it's gonna yep. be it's gonna be a big old quilt nerding party. And I'm sorry Jill can't make it. To Temecula. Right. <laughs> you know, guys, like full disclosure, I did have the opportunity to like sneak in at the last minute, but it was just so last minute. So you guys are gonna have to like record just like a little like video of like the three of you like saying hi and yeah. stuff so that we can play it on yeah for on sure for sure so don said the braid was used 
at the bottom of long skirts to protect delicate fabric like cotton from wear. Also, velvet was available. You sometimes see quilts bound with it. Oh, very interesting. I could definitely oh. see that at the bottom of a skirt for sure. This is a hefty fabric. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe I do have a quilt bound with it. Don, would it definitely be used for a heavier quilt? Like, let's say you've got a really heavy crazy. I could see you binding the, a crazy quilt with that. Because you need something that's got some oomph. Yeah. And I, I think of it like, um, I'm not exactly how it would, I guess it would have been like, if this is the bottom of the skirt, I'm guessing the skirt braid would have been applied. And I guess it's only be on the backside. So it sticks out, it sticks down a little bit farther than the skirt itself. And so that's what brushes the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's mm -hmm. how it was applied. Yeah. It's kind of like a beard guard for your <laughs> yeah. it's a sidewalk, a sidewalk guard for your skirt. Yeah. yeah. Dawn says they use it on cotton too. Um, Janet is asking what this retreat is that you're going on. Ah, yes. So, um, it is, um, our friend Leah Zuber, uh, she is in Temecula and every year she puts on, it's a quilt history retreat. I mean, how ner much nerdier and fun can it get? Um, and she does this every year. I think this is maybe the eighth year and, um, she has 50 slots. So if you would like to get a chance at going next year, um, I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure she has a list or a, like a you know a mailing list. And so if you mm -hmm. just just Google Zeber, it's a Z E I B E R um, retreat. You'll find her, and she's on she's on Facebook and Instagram. And I think she usually sends out like next year's thing. I think by like December or something, doesn't she? Didn't you sign up? around that I, yeah I think yeah I think she comes out with it yeah probably in the summer late summer early fall if you guys follow isn't she zebra quilts or is she Leah zebra if you guys follow her account on Instagram she she will always post post on there she said uh Arlene just says current attendees get first rate of refusal then spots open up oh and Rebecca says it's in August I you know I thought it was pretty pretty early you had to to start signing yeah. up yeah yeah if you look if you look you could find uh zebra quilts it's zebra quilts on facebook mm -hmm. yeah yeah so steph will be there to report back on all the fun being had um without yeah without without me but her mom will be there so you guys mm -hmm. will get to hang out with 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 mother stephanie cake who is also who is I, also I call her a Mother lot Kate. of fun. <laughs> She's a hoot. Yeah. So Jill, we're coming up on 920. Well, I have <laughs> this, one more. We cannot little... help ourselves but to go mm -hmm. over. I know you have another thing to show, but let's not forget we have a drawing to do too. So I have um my little last thing to show here from our back from our leather rolls further back is another role that again is currently sitting on my instagram page it's actually currently on sale too on my instagram page if you like this but look at this cutie mm -hmm. oh what a cutie and um the little to be part on the bottom yeah is that um Solid. So it doesn't have any kind of, it's just solid. Okay. It's solid. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't sure. I know some of them because I have that weird obsession with the mm -hmm. thimble. <laughs> some of them have like a little recessed area, right? For the thimble that, because. Yes. I do have one of those in my personal collection, but not this one in particular. And you can see. I would imagine. Because. Cause I would imagine the, um, those get some wear and tear on them. Oh yeah. Cause and, like, look at the, look at the edge here. Mm -hmm. For sure. Where it was bound. Like you can see the original like hand stitches and stuff like that um but they're just awesome and i just can't yeah i can't resist them and i you know <laughs> and, and i need them and it's hard to part with them and i do have some others in my personal collection but um just as a just as a little thing for people to give their feedback on after our first stream last week on this particular topic when we'd had so much fun and we'd gotten lots of really great feedback um there's been a little bit of discussion about potentially adding a particular sewing tools stream to our repertoire 
you know, something like needlework nights or something like that, where we, you know, have a stream where we talk about nothing but sewing tools because we could talk about it forever. Yes, yeah. Um, so I just thought I'd throw it out there to see if people would actually be interested in something like that, you know, and an hour once, maybe every other week where we talk about tools that we have, you could maybe send in pictures of tools that you have and, um, you know, really fun people like, you know, Dawn can talk till the ends of the earth about our tools, her, her tools, everybody else's tools, and we can just have a big tool party. Robin says that sounds great. Rebecca says love it. Um, Yakamo says I like it. Somebody tell me they hate it. Just to, just to keep the numbers balanced. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that we are thinking about so when we are done with uh with Don's book here and who knows maybe we might just have to read the rolls book at some point too because this stuff's really cool um really is. but we will let you know if that is something that we really put out into the world there and with that let me yeah, I just um as you're doing your the drawing I put Don's um Etsy in here because you know I go through Etsy on my phone and I think I miss stuff because I, I I was just glancing as you were talking, I was glancing at her Etsy page and I'm like, mm -hmm. I this new stuff on. <laughs> no, I you miss, you definitely <laughs> missed up. I'll tell you going back and forth because obviously I've pulled up her links to her Etsy very often lately with linking stuff for the book. Um, the user ability on phones I've noticed doesn't like necessarily show everything i only yeah. notice because i i'm constantly seeing her post her products to her page and sharing them uh because remember too you were also interested in the uh, mother of pearl um thread yes there um, yes and i i looked for those i half half ass looked for those the other day i got distracted i looked and then got distracted so yeah. yeah there's a lot of stuff on there that that not necessarily. I also wanted to tell you just because I'm I'm checking. Uh, we have officially been approved for links in our chat because the links are actually live now that you're posting them, <laughs> where originally they were not. So yay! Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, and I I keep forgetting about that and just posting links because I'm used to posting links on my Twitch stream. So well, and um, we I'm glad that we're good. Can now so. post links. So, all right, let me get my random number generator here to figure out who our winner is tonight. Okay. And a drum roll, please. Our winner is Arlene. Hey, congratulations. congratulations. Arlene. You get yourself a Mary Wither Wax big honking pattern book. This is, this is an amazing pattern. Maybe someday I will make a couple of blocks in it because I am terrible at applique. But how do you get better? You practice. You practice. You, practice. you know, and that, that is exactly. People always say to me, how do you do all that? Practice. Do you think mm -hmm. my first applique looked good? No, it didn't. <laughs> I've taken some classes, but like I, I've gotten like three things done on it. So Arlene, I need you to either message me on Instagram, the quilt nerding, you can message me on Facebook um, or you can email quiltnerding at gmail.com to get me your address so that we can send out this like super awesome book for you. Oh, she doesn't. Uh, Arlene said if Stephanie has the book, she can bring it to Temecula. She actually <laughs> doesn't have it, even though I... we were just together. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't think about that. Um, well, <laughs> How are we to know? <laughs> no, sadly, I'm going to have to ship it to you, but I'm happy. We are happy to give gifts. So please just get me your address. So I get that. And then just as a reminder for everyone else between now and our week four, yes. um, snap a picture of yourself with your book, with your pet, with your book on a gorgeous quilt with your book, telling us that you are participating in our reading here of Dawn's book to enter you to win her sewing rolls book, which will be uh, the drawing for that will be week four. When we wrap up, that'll be our grand finale. And our and for next, next week, next week, next week, we have a toad. What? 
next week we have a tote bag. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We have a tote bag for next week, but a reading for next week, which I don't mm -hmm. think we did say at the top, did we? Um, we we're going to do seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. So sewing sets, clamps, and thread work. I will have some interesting things. You know, I actually have a chatelaine. I will have some interesting things to show. I'll have to get pictures of that though, probably. Yeah. So these are these are some of the beautiful items that I do not necessarily have. So you're mm -hmm. it's gonna fall on you to <laughs> to show some uh some actual oh shucks actual items. Yes. So <laughs> you're just gonna have fun, to light a fire under my butt to make sure that I take <laughs> pictures of it in plenty of time. Although if you've got any of the stuff for the for the you know the tatting and the crochet and the this, I don't really have anything to go for that. So. Um, I have a few of those. But, I um, do have a buttload of clamps. So. I know. I have one clamp and it's a reproduction, but I will bring in that nonetheless. We can, yes, we can definitely talk about clamps. So yeah, apparently we're terrible hosts and we can't keep it at an hour. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Y'all stayed. So you're the suckers. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess that's going to do it for us now. So thank you all so much for joining. Dawn, thank you so much for coming and for being so generous and for doing this with us. We couldn't do it without you. It wouldn't be anywhere near sure. as fun. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dawn has really upped our game. I know. So, we are forever grateful. <laughs> How can we go back to reg being regular muggles after this? I know. <laughs> so... I, All right, guess everybody. I, will, I will leave with one last plug for myself, which is join me on Thursday on my stream. I put my uh, my link in there, 2 p.m. Eastern. I stream on Mondays and Thursdays, and you never know what's going to happen because it's live. <laughs> and Stephanie talks about all kinds of quilt-related history, including reading original classic yes. quilt history books. Yes. We're and we did a, a pop-up stream the other day while we were in Pennsylvania, so... Oh, we were sweaty. <laughs> wow, that's 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 all you got. That's all you got to put in there. Like, come if you come on over. If you've watch never us, watched, we sweaty. <laughs> if you've never watched Cake TV, maybe don't start with that one. <laughs> you will not be impressed. Also, everybody, before you leave, if you could give this stream a thumbs up, that really helps us out a lot on our channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. And with all that fun, we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.